My name is Squiggly Peter, and I love my fish and chips. I love fat salt and vinegar, what dribbles down me lips. And when I'm out there pirating, my pencil in my hand, I draw myself whatever I need or whatever comes to hand. Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Arr, the pirate. Hello, my name's Martin Harvey, creator of The Boy with a Saucepan Hat and Squiggly Pete the Pirate. Arr! And here's my magic pencil, so let's draw. Hi, so I'm using this um, De La Rowney Aquafine watercolour paper. It's hot pressed, which means it's very smooth, which means I can use my scratchy ink pen on it or a pencil and then paint it watercolour afterwards. Right, so that's the equipment. Standard pencil, HB and um, some 300 GSM hot pressed watercolour paper. Right. So today I'm going to be doing a little bit of Squiggly Pete opening a letter. So let's, it's going to be about here. Okay, so I'm going to have Squiggly Pete opening and reading a letter. So he's going to be a little bit surprised um, by the contents of the letter and I need to plot out how to draw and where to draw him. So I don't want him to start up here and then end up going off the page or start over here and then have to put the letter over here. So I want it nice in the middle. I'm going to use about half the sheet of paper. And let's say if we imagine Squiggly Pete's body to be here neck, head, and then his shoulders, arm. So let's say the letter's about here. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting in the letter and then drawing Squiggly Peak back from that. May be a little bit high there. Let's just move it down to about here. Now, it's going to be an A4 piece of paper, bendy. And I want to think about <clears throat> what happens when you pick up a piece of A4 paper. Okay, here I've got one of my drawings just hanging around. Now we're going to see see it from, from well, we're going to see Squiggly Pete from the front. So we're going to see the back of his hand. So he'll be holding the paper to us like that. We'll see his fingers like that. See his thumbs on the other side. This is how you'd hold a piece of paper like that. You turn it over. And that gives you an idea of what it'll look like. It'll be sort of that sort of shape. See, there's knuckles there. If we could see the thumb on the other side, it'd be like that. Right, so that's the sort of thing we're going for. So let's go, shall we? So first of all, we'll draw a squiggly piece of paper. I'm not going to draw in that side because that's where his hand's going to go. And his hand will be about here. Now, if we draw this sort of shape there, you can't go far wrong. So we just do one finger, two fingers, three fingers, and the little finger just tucked underneath. That's pretty much it not great and then just do some knuckles so that's all we're going to see and the thumb of course would be on the other side but we're not going to see that and just fill in your paper and there we go there's the letter ready to be read now we've got to work out exactly where he is in relation to this so if we say his wrist is about here and we say his forearm is going to go to there and his shoulder will be there then we can see that just draw a stick person and his that's the width of his shoulders, top of his other arm there, elbow, and that hand's just could be hanging down doing nothing. And his body will be could be like that. Let's have him leaning back a bit because he's surprised. Oh, he says, What's this all about? So his body's going to be leaning back like that. And waist there. Don't need to worry too much about the rest of him because it won't be in the picture. But that's the shape. So can you see we're sort of developing a stick man? And then his spine will go up the middle like that, and his neck will be there. Let's just have it bending back a bit. So he's going to be surprised, so he's taking back. Oh, standing back. So there's his neck. So you're getting the rough proportions of his body. And for a head, I always draw an oval shape like this, and then a round shape on the back. A little ball. I have to keep his brain in. There we are. We have a human, and across the middle of his face. The eyes are about halfway up the face. 
So I'm just going to just plot in where his eyes will go. His nose will be there. He's got a big long nose, hasn't he? And he's saying, oh, he's a little bit shocked. So I draw in a shocked type mouth. That's just like a circle, black at the top, and his eyes. As I said, usually I start with the eyes, but in this case, because I'm working back from a letter, I'm starting from the letter. And we've got to draw a line from the letter he's reading, like that. So the, his line of sight will go like that. So his pupils will be down here, looking at the letter. And there we are, there's Squiggly Pete. Now, just going to put in a little bit more detail. Right, there we are, that could be any human. Now, as we know, Squiggly Pete's only got one eye. So we'll give him his eye patch, like that. Let's rub out the pupil in that case. Give him his eye patch. Here, what's this all about, he says. And then, of course, um, we'll give him his ears, which will be nose, ears, just about there. Big earrings. And his bandana over the top of that round head. Can you see where that was? And just do a couple of circles, and the knot at the back, and oh, it's the rest of the bandana. Now, put in the width of his neck around that stick, and we've got pretty much Squiggly Pete shape, but he looks, he looks quite like a young Squiggly Pete, doesn't he? He's got no beard. So let's put his beard in. Got to make pirate noises, of course. And there he pretty much is. A little bit of a moustache. And there's Squiggly Pete reading his letter. Now, all you have to do now is fill in the rest of the details. Flesh him out a bit. There's his neck. Um, you have to put in his big, I don't know what you call it, leathery bit on his coat there, collar, and the other collar. Draw his shoulders and those little epaulette things on his shoulders, the jacket he's acquired from somewhere. And then to do the arm, we just follow the lines we've plotted out there, like that. It's a quick squiggle because it's fabric coat and it could fall in any sort of way. And if you imagine it's tubes, like there's the tube of his arm. Let's do that. There we go. Crook of his elbow there. Oh, and I think the front of his jacket goes like that. It varies a bit. I haven't seen it for a while. And there's his legs there. So there's Squiggly Pete in a minute or so. Now, we've still got our pencil lines in there, haven't we? So the next thing we do is to just to rub those out. Those are what we call construction lines to construct our drawing. Just tied it up a little bit with pencil like that. And he's pretty much ready to turn into ink. Don't need that line there. All those bits. Now, this ink I'm using is very powerful stuff. It's um, Indian ink, in this case, made. I'm just going to lighten things up with the pencil a little bit. There we go. Now the ink will actually soak into the pencil and paper and bind together because it's very strong stuff. And once you make a mark with this, it ain't going anywhere. It stands up to rubbing with an eraser and watercolour and everything else you can throw at it. Uh, make sure you don't spill it on the carpet. Right, how are we doing? Shall we see if we can get this going with the ink? There. It's a bit of an old pot, this. There's lots of grubby bits around the top. But I hold it nice and firmly, so I'm not going to spill it on the carpet. I take out my old scratchy style pen. It's with a number six nib. I don't know if you can see that. Right, which is a pretty standard nib, I think. I always put the date on things. So today's the 20th of Feb, 21. And I like to start up at this corner and work our way down, because otherwise if you started here and worked your way up, you'd smudge everything. So I'm just going to put in... Oop. Let's get some more ink. I'm right at the bottom of the pot now. See, it doesn't have to be too neat. It's the effect we like, especially if there's movement involved. And draw around his hat and his ears. Big ears, of course and the front part of his hat. And like I say, I usually like to start with the eyes, but in this case I haven't. Now I'll put in his eye patch and his actual eye. Nice circle and looking down there. And I'll put in his nose and his forehead. 
one thing I didn't put in the sketch was eyebrows, raised eyebrows there. Oh, he's saying, do his mouth shape. Oh, like that. I don't know why, but I always find it helps to make pirate noises when I'm drawing Squiggly Pete. There's his earring. You have to have a steady hand to do this, but it doesn't worry matter too much if you haven't. Right, and there's his beard. Arr, 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 where's me pasty? Good words for a pirate to say. There we go. And this squiggly paint and his jacket goes around like this. And gets a leathery sort of collar with big brass buttons. Well, that's how I imagined it anyway. I'll have to do some more research on what pirates actually wear. There we are. Now he's starting to look like Squiggly Pete, and he's got these epaulets, I think they're called. Little badges of rank on his coat. And I should research those, really, because I might be drawing the wrong type. There we are, drawing his hand, his arm, just makes squiggles for his clothes. I like to do little indentations at the elbow, just helps to define. And of course he's got these big cuffs, hasn't he? Uh, you might as well draw his hands, I'll try and draw it freehand. So just the back of his hand like this, and his fingers are going to go, oh, off into the distance. We're not too worried about that. And his thumb coming out that side there. There we go. And the back of his jacket there. And his trousers. Well, of course he's got stripy trousers, hasn't he? Better have worn some few stripes. I'm going to paint it in in a minute. There we go. Now, the reason I'm using this hot pressed watercolour paper is because if you use just bog standard watercolour, they tend to make it cold press, which means, well, I suppose it's cold when they press it, squeeze all the water out. And you end up with a rough textured surface, which is fine because when you're drawing watercolour, when you're painting watercolours, very often it's nice to have that texture. But in this case, because I'm using this pen, and it's quite a scratchy pen, it's difficult to manoeuvre, it's good to have this very smooth hot press surface, so it's a little bit more expensive. But um, when you're doing this sort of work, it's worth it. Of course, if you're at home and you've just got some crayons and a bit of any old paper, it doesn't matter. And a pencil, you can just do what you want. Right, here we go. Nearly finished. Put in some shading on his eye patch there. There we go. And he's nearly done. Now, um, just going to put in a few lines. Maybe we can see through the paper. Or it might be something scribbled on the back. And just a couple of bits like that, which show movement. Um, oh, he's saying, what's all this? Now, just go like this to get around to these circular spots so I don't smudge the ink and we're done let's give it a little title shall we squiggly Pete reads the letter oh there we go give him a pocket or two shall we and uh, oh, where's his magic pencil? It's got it in this pocket today. There we are. Could have a parrot looking on and some other, could have the cat looking as well there. Could have done the cat there, which would have been nice. But anyway, uh, so that's it. Put the top firmly back on the ink, making sure we don't spill any of that. Winsor & Newton black Indian ink, which I believe has got shellac in it. And clean our pen. Now I'm just going to go get some water and let this dry off now so I can rub out the pencil. Now if I was going to uh, paint this normally I'd let it dry for about an hour make sure that's all nice and uh, dry because if you take my rubber to it now to rub out the pencil uh, missed a little bit there 
I'll rub out the pencil fibre, it'll probably smudge the ink. So, the next thing I do is get my hairdryer and do this. And that should be ready to go. Now I'm just going to go and get some water. So, so here we have uh, Squiggly Pete, the pirate, who's just opened a letter and he's reading it and he's somewhat surprised. And first of all, I sketched it in pencil and then I've gone over it to put the ink. This is the Windsor and Newton uh, black Indian ink with shellac. It's very, very strong and resistant to wear. And now I'm just going to rub out all the pencil lines. Here we go. And the ink being very, very strong and bound to the paper stay exactly in place as we want it to. Right. Now obviously I'm working with very firm watercolour paper, um, so which is almost like a cardboard. Uh, if you're using just plain copy paper at home, just be careful you don't wrinkle up the paper when you do this. Oh, on the other hand, you can skip the pencil stage and just go straight to using ink if you want. But I'm just showing you my techniques, methods and materials that I use here. There we go. So that's Squiggly Pete with pencil marks rubbed out. Just going to brush that off. And we're ready to start painting. Now, as I think I've mentioned elsewhere, but just to recap, I use this little set of um, Winsor and Newton, I think they're called Cotman series, watercolours. And I bought this kit about five years ago and it's lasted very well. Of course I've replaced lots of the pans as they wear out. It's pretty messy but in general I have sort of reds, greens and blue mixes up here. Just using the tin to a little palette. It's perfectly adequate. You could have a white plate or more complex palettes if you want, but I've got this area here ready to make up my flesh colour. Just cleaned up, ready to go. I've got a little dab of white acrylic here in case I need to mix in pinks and things like that. The white helps to uh, give that, but I don't like using it too much because once you've used it, you've got to wash out your brush from scratch. So there we go. And I've arranged the paints in order here the, the way I like um, and given the little code, code values there so I can remember what exa exactly they are. Right, now I'll try and keep it in camera, I think, so you can see a little bit of what I do. And I prop it up there. Let's bring my water over here. And my favourite brush at the moment, which I can't, I don't think you can see, it's a Pro Art uh, Renaissance Sable number four, something like that, I think. There we go. I just grab your favourite watercolour brush and the first thing I do when I'm drawing my painting of my characters to give some sort of reference is I make up the flesh colour first and put in the flesh tones. That helps me to sort of see what's going on in the picture really. And I use a little bit of yellow ochre as it's called. Hardly any left in this pan. I use it so much I love it. I'm not going to need much of that I don't think. So uh, I won't go mad. Actually while we're about it I'm going to put a little dab into that letter just to give it some body so it's not plain white. So what I'm going to do there is just make it wet with another flat-ended brush like this. Just going to dab some of that yellow ochre in there. There we go. Just give it a bit of character. Okie doke. Now, um, and I think I'm going to use a little bit for his gold earring as well before I go and mess it up with any other colours. And his gold buttons, bits and pieces like that. And his gold cuffs he's got. Can't see that one, of course. Right, so there we go. And into that yellow ochre, then I add a tiny touch of this Windsor Red. Now this is quite strong, so it picks up, the brush picks it up very quickly. Just a tiny touch of that. It makes like an orangey colour. You could say it's orange, but it's a bit more than that, it's more like a flesh colour. Tiny bit more red. There we go, I've got to be very careful with that. Okay, 
and then just basically colour them in. I like to leave little bits of white here and there, which gives a little bit of lift, a bit of daylight to the whole thing. For example, on his lip and his nose there, depending on where the light's coming from and so on. And of course, fingers. And that's it, job done. See, easy, just colouring in. <clears throat> now, I'll give that a second to dry and then I'll apply a little bit more with a slightly darker tinge to it. So I can just add in some of the messy browny bits I've got around here. There's that dry, let's have a look, it's not too bad. So I'm going to give him some. 3D shape to his face, you see. I should have let that dry a bit, really, but never mind. I'll come back to it in a minute and give it some more depth. Okay, well, while I'm waiting for that, I'll crack on and do his coat. Now, his coat's a lovely light blue colour. Let's make this over here. I'm going to be using cerulean or cerulean, however you pronounce this. This is like a sky blue with a touch of WB, Windsor blue in there. Dab there just to try it out. Look at that lovely rich blue coming through. And all we do is squiggle it on like so. Okay, it doesn't really matter if you go over the lines or leave white spaces. It adds a bit of air to it freshness and uh, life, because life isn't cardboard cut out perfect painted edges, is it? There we go. And that's the first layer. Now, if I was to dab in some more, let's just show you some of the effects we can have here. I'm going to get some of this rich Windsor blue mix it up here with this, this greeny palette I've got going on here and I'm going to bleed some of that in it's a greeny blue I don't mind and because it's still wet as you see it sort of blends in I don't sometimes I like to make the coat more crisp um, but I'm not too worried sometimes it's nice to just try a different effect isn't it there we go That's that. Do a little bits like that, it makes it look like there. Oh, creases in the fabric. There we go. And next, I think I'll do a little bit of work on his trousers. There. I'm going to use some nice yellow stripes, mix up my yellows. It's a bit messy up here, but there we go. My yellow's all gone a bit green. Yeah, put in some lovely gold stripes to his trousers. Whatever they call them. Breeches, pantaloons, whatever pirates would call them. There we go. Ah, I needed to do that, didn't I? The uh, leather collar of his coat, so let's get that in as well. This yellowy ochre colour. merged in with the buttons but never mind. Uh, I think that's it. Let's add a bit more depth to that cuff there. The shadow under the fingers. I don't think you can see this so well because it's a little bit bright on the video. I need to correct those settings. And I'm just going to put a little bit of blue up here. This shoulder thingy. And while I've got the blue out, and as that's mainly dried, it's going to add a little bit more definition to the shadows. Right, there we go, squiggly peats coming on. Now I need to do that red bandana. 
So I'm going to use my Windsor Red and we've got some often a little bit of orange mixed in just to give it a bit more warmth and careful I don't smudge anything there we go, there's his bandana which gives him his character I'm going to warm up some deeper red here. Let's go in there. I might just have tried dabbing and letting it bleed in from this corner. Yes, that's a nice effect. I like that today. Yeah, lovely. Right, now there's not a lot left to do. As you can see, he's nearly there. I'll give a little tip. What I do very often to speed things up when I'm doing a video like this, just give a little bit of hair dry. So I apologise for the noise. There we go, and it's just about done. I'm going to pop in the purple for his trousers. I use a little thing called, it's pretty much just basic Winston and Newton mauve up here. Lovely, rich colour. Some colours are more rich than others. Some you have to really work to get the colour out. Others just full of pigment. Let me just check that's dry. Yes, otherwise we make a right mess. Oh, lovely. There we are. Lovely rich purple there going in. Complements the gold nicely. I'm very pleased with the range of colours we've got with this squiggly peak character. There we are. Don't need to finish him off. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. All I have to do then is just check any details that I've missed. I'm going to give those shadows on the face a little bit of depth because basically you can't see it too well here. It's not too bad on the paper, but I'm just going to go up here and give a little bit of depth to the side of the face. Right, I haven't used this paper for a while. Not that used to it. They do vary in how they take the paint. You get used to it. Alright, and I need to add a little bit of depth to his mouth. It's going to use red, but not entirely red. It's going to contaminate it a little bit with a darker a browns or anything I've got going around. So you've got a basic red, but we've got shadow in there as well. If it was totally red, it would jump out like a sore thumb. There we go. I've left a tiny bit of white. That could be his teeth. Um, and the other thing I like to do, just to finish things off, is to give a little bit of um, depth to the eyes. And I use a little bit of blue, a little bit of Payne's grey. And just test it. That's pretty much it. The side away from the pupil. A little low. Maybe I've overdone that. Never mind. Put a bit of blue in there for shadow. And I think, let's put some blue in here. There we go. Add the depth of the collar. And bring out his epaulets, or whatever they're called. Oh, missed the pencil, didn't we? Let's see if we can get some paint on that pencil. I think it's a standard Stadler um, HB that he uses, like this one, with a little pink rubber on the end. So let's make it nice and yellow. There we go. The ubiquitous yellow pencil with a little red on the end. There we are. Squiggly Pete. All done. Ooh, let's just give a little bit of extra shading to that eye patch.
Oops. Right. There we go. Squiggly Pete, the pirate, reads the letter. I wonder what it says. Right. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you next time. My name is Squiggly Peter, and I love my fish and chips. I love that salt and vinegar, what dribbles down me lips. And when I'm out there pirating, my pencil in my hand, I draw myself whatever I need or whatever comes to hand. Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Pete. are the pirate.